Class, today I want to give you a tutorial on reading files that contain objects. So we're going to try to go through the whole process here. Let me uh, show you the menu bar here in Eclipse. I want to walk all the way from the start so you can see exactly how you're going to do this and especially how you create the project. Because if, if you create this the normal way, it'll be much harder than if you do it the special way. So I'm going to call this file object tutorial. And this is the special way. Use project folder as source for sources and class files. If you use the default, it makes it very difficult for the program to find your text file, your input file. So always choose this for all projects, really, um, unless you have very specific needs. So we're going to create that. And then I'm going to open up my package explorer. Well, actually, let's do it this way. I'll show you. It's actually easier if you do it through the package explorer, but uh, I'm going to do file new class. Now you need to tell it um, what the source folder is here. So let me pull out my source folder. So I just picked, uh, use the browser to pick this directory. And now I can put in class public. All right, and I'll just want to do a test to make sure that you can actually run this file. And you can click on this or I just use control F11 to run. Okay, so we have a file, um, a running program. Now we're gonna create an input file. So let's do file, new, untitled text file. And we're gonna create um, some fields here. I'm gonna give, um, let's use first name and last name. You don't need to put a header in here, but just for simplicity, I'll show you that. Okay, so we got John Doe, Jane Doe, Phil Collins, and Taylor Swift. Do I not duo? Do I leap us? Sorry, I don't know all these. Uh, um, so here's the there's a list. Okay, so it's important now that we save this file in the right place. So we're going to save this file, and you've got to identify what is the parent, and then give the name. And you're going to call. I'm going to call this names.txt. You do need to tell it .txt. I had some students who were confused because they just called it, you know, whatever without the extension, and then no, it's not going to work for you. Okay, so we've got an input file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to we are going to read the file and then we're going to print the names. And let's start with the class. So I'm going to call it name, pretty straightforward. And I'm going to have a string for first name and last name. So we got our class. Now we're going to have to generate the, the, the class constructors, getters and setters, and to string. So by now, hopefully you've watched a couple of my videos and you know how to create that class. So you should stop the video right now and create the class for this name, constructor, getter, setter, to string. So stop that for a second and then come back. So we're going to start with the constructor. Um, let's try giving it a, um, a null constructor and a full constructor. So what's the difference? Uh, a null constructor won't take any arguments. A full constructor will take both a first name and a last name. So let's start with a null constructor. Everything is going to be public. And this is going to... So the, the, the thing that makes a constructor different is that there is no return argument. Instead, we just call it name. And the name of the function is the name, same name as the class. And like I said, this one's going to be no, I'm going to try to get you guys into the use of the habit of using Java docs. So this is our null constructor for an empty name. So I'm going to refer to something I haven't written yet, and we'll do that next. I'm going to call this dot set first name null and this dot set last name null. 
let's go down there and do that setter. So the setter is going to be a public, it's going to be a void and set first name. This will have to take a string first name. And then all it has to do is do this dot, and then I'll just paste this in and get rid of the string, equals first name. And let's okay set the first name, and then we can actually copy this whole thing and let's paste it to do. And I'll do a replace here. First, last, and we can replace, oh, except that's going to be, I'm going to have to fix the case on that. Okay, so we're going to fix the case on that. Great, so we got our setters for the first name and last name. So now let's go back to our constructor and let's give the full constructor. So we're going to use both. Again, <laughs> we don't take any parameters, but this time, um, I mean, we don't take any, uh, we have a return type, but we are going to put in both the first name and the last name now. And now we're going to do the sets, but this time we're actually going to use and if you haven't watched my other videos, the reason I'm using the setters is because we don't want to duplicate code. We're going to, we want to try to reuse the code. Okay, so we're about half done. What I haven't done yet is the getters. So let's do get the first name. Oh, I didn't actually. Uh... Okay, that's fine. Public. Uh... It's not static. Uh, by the way, what's why do we, don't we use static? If you use static here, that means that the function is meant to be called standalone outside of the of the class, and we, we want these to be class member uh, functions. So, uh, get uh, this is going to return a string, and it's going to be get, and then let me go up here, just copy this. I'll, I'm going to change this in just a second. Don't don't panic. Okay, so get first name. Oh, actually, we don't need to take a parameter. Okay, so we're going to get the first name, and this is going to return this dot first name. And let's do, let's try to do this again. Okay, so I've got my first name, <coughs> um, first name and last names. Two string. Another reason I just wrote the getters is because I wanted to use them here. Two string always returns a string. You've got to make sure you use exactly the same function definition. As we get into chapter nine, we'll go over what in, what overriding is, and this is an override of a function, and so it has to match exactly what the the typical definition of toString is going to be. It's a public string, toString, doesn't take any arguments. If you vary it all in any of those components, it's not going to override and it won't work in a println. Okay, so we are going to return a uh, string and it's going to say name and then it's going to have um, first name equals a comma and last name equals close quote. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to fix this because we need to actually put something in here.
And what we need to put in here is this dot get first name. And let's just try hovering over this. See how the, where it says here, get the first name? That's from my Java doc. Isn't that nice? Okay, and let's go over here and let's put this dot get last name plus again we can hover over this now it says the last name see this line here this is, tells me I'm going over 80 columns so I'm gonna go ahead and break that line and I think there must be a little error here okay I think I just got I'm out of check the um, the blue to see what are quoted and what is not Okay, I just forgot the plus here. There we go. So I'm just going to hit run just to verify that it, it doesn't crash, it, everything compiles, but we haven't actually done anything yet. So now we're going to go up to here and do the read file. And I tried to keep main as clean as possible. So I'm going to create a file, a function called read file. And that function is going to take a name of a file. So in this case, it's going to be names.txt. And then it's going to return an array of the name object. And let's call this names. So that's going to set up the array of objects. And then I'm going to print the names. And um, let's go ahead and put that into a separate function as well. So this will be print names with names. So it's complaining I haven't defined these functions yet. So let's do that now. So we're going to take, uh, let's go ahead and define it, public static void read file yeah, let's, let's find lowercase. And this is also going to, ha going to have to do throws um, file not Found exception, I think it is. As soon as we get into files, we're going to have to import java.util.star. And now let's put some pseudocode here. So we are going to open the file, get the scanner, and then we're going to have a Sentinel loop on has next um, and then inside this loop for each iteration we are going to uh, read the first name, read the last name, and then build the name and put in array. And then we're done, we're going to have to return the array. And of course, we're going to need to declare an array. So let's just go ahead and do that here. So again, it's it's like ha having a string array. You've seen that all the time, except we're just going to use the name of our class now, name. And then one thing that people don't get right away is that the brackets, and later when we do objects that are parameterized, the param parameterization of an object, um, which will look like something in the uh, less than greater than that. This is all the all one thing. It's all the data type. It's like an int. It's like a double. It's like string. This is actually part of that. OK, so the next thing is the name of the, of the variable. So I'm going to call it names again, which is not the same as up here. Um, in fact, just to make it clear, it's different. I'm going to call this list. Okay, so this is going to be new, and then you know how you do a new int, for example? So we're going to do a new name, and then because we only knew how to do arrays right now, I'm just going to set this arbitrarily at size 25. Obviously, that would crash if we did more than 25, but for now, that's a fine limitation to make. Okay, now we need to open a file. 
So we have a file object, and so we're going to create a name uh, file uh, file of names equals new file, and this is the parameter file name that's being passed in. Whenever we open a file, we have that possibility of throwing an exception. So we have to check if file names dot you see the options here can read. So if we can read it, we're going to proceed. And the rest of this goes inside here. I'm going to leave the return outside. And then you can also do Control A, Control I to tabify things correctly. And also, if we do throw the file, file not found exception, it's actually going to propagate all the way up to main. So let's go put that there as well. Next, we need to get a scanner on the file. So scanner sc file names equals new scanner. So a lot of people go wrong by just putting file name directly in here, but you do need to go through the step of opening that file. If you if you just use the file name, the string itself, then what you're going to get is it's just going to scan that one little string. So names.text. Um, so instead, we are actually going to scan the whole file, and now we get to this more familiar code. So we need a sentinel loop on has next. While sc file names dot has next, we need to do these items. So let's read the first name. And then you can take a look here, next, this is to read a string. And then similarly, we want string last equals sc file names dot next. Lastly, we're going to build that name and put it in an array. OK, so we did declare an array here, list. Uh, and we need to figure out which element to put it into. So let me define another variable that will refer to the count. So the um, SC, sorry, the list indexed by the count equals, uh, let's create this new, and this is going to be a name, and we are going to give it the full constructor, so first and last. OK, so this is going to keep on reading, but it's going to keep on almost putting it into the same place. So after I do that, I'm going to increase the count. Now by the time I get out here, the array should be filled. And if the array, if the file was empty or anything like that, it would, we would still have this null list to return. So we're going to return list. And we are going to print this when we get back. So I'm not going to worry about that. And we get a small error here. Uh, sorry. Equals new name. And then return list says void. Oh, this is a void. So we're actually going to turn return name array. And then let's file not found exception. So up here it already added java.io.file when I started doing the file stuff, but it really needs to be java.io.star. And so now it, it brings that in the file not found exception. Now we still haven't done print names yet. Um, I'm going to put this, comment that out for just a second and actually just run this right now just to make sure. Okay, so we have... I think this is complaining because I put this inside here and shouldn't have done that. This is actually needs to be outside the class for file object tutorial. Let's change that, get rid of that last bracket. 
So now we've got two classes in this file that are separate. So one class is the class name, which is no longer public, and then the other class is this file object tutorial. So let's try that. There we go. And it didn't do anything, but it actually ran. So um, now let's try printing out the names. So let's uncomment out print names, control I to fix that, and let's actually write the function. This is an array of names. So all we have to do is iterate through the array. And inside that, we're going to print each name. So there's a couple different ways you can iterate through the array. I'm going to show you the way that um, this function for each was developed specifically for traversing arrays. So it's a nice thing to use, and you'll you'll find that it's it's handy to use during this class. So for each um, name, the type of is a is a name, and then we're going to call it n. For each name in names, all we have to do is sys out control space of n. So what that's going to do is it's going to take each item in the names array and assign it to this variable name n. And then it's now we can use n in the loop. So this is a form that we will be using a lot in this class. So let's try running this now. Okay, there's a bunch of nulls at the end because I had 25 elements and I didn't check to see which ones were off the list. So it does this. Now we can actually fix those nulls by saying if n doesn't equal null. Let's try running that. There we go. So now it only prints the ones that are there. Um, there are ways of shrinking the array, but we haven't taught that yet. But next, uh, in two chapters, we're going to be reading about array lists, and that's really the way to address uh, a list of things when you don't know how many you've got. So let's summarize the different things that we've learned here today. First is how you create a project. So when you do that File New Java Project, make sure that you select to use Project Folder as root for sources and class files. Otherwise, it gets complicated where you put things. And then we, we created an untitled text file, and I showed you how you're going to save that. And you want to make sure you name it as a text file and give it a parent. Um, then, uh, and really, the better way to do it is you use the package explorer. You just right click on where you want to drop it and then save it there. We talked about how to um, read the files. So don't forget you've got to throw your file not found exception. Don't forget you've got to check whether you can read the file. Then you use the same scanners that you've used with the user input. You just have to use has next instead of um, getting uh, um, checking to see what the return value is. By the way, some of you might have noticed that this is slightly different than the Sentinel loop that, it, that I've typically been teaching, where you have to get the first one before the loop, and then inside the loop, you're going to reverse the order. And you can do it that way, but then it involves checking, creating a Boolean variable you assign to has next, and that would be the first value. Then you can check that Boolean variable here. Then you do all of this first, and then at the end, you check for has, you store the value of has next into that same Boolean variable. This is obviously shorter, so that's the way I'm going to teach it, but this is literally the same loop that I've been teaching you. And then, so you just uh, you just have to read each field, store it into each element of your list, okay? And don't forget, we learned how to create a class here. Make sure you give it javadoc, and I forgot to actually create a javadoc. Name class represents a first name, last name. So we've got all our standard functions here. Make sure that you use the setters in your constructors. By the way, we didn't never use this null constructor. That's some, sometimes the case, but I wanted to show you how you do it. And use the getters in your toString. 
And I showed you that when you create your Java doc, you can now actually get those tool tips. So if I hover over set first name, this is actually the, the thing that I told you about. Uh, let's see, where's my uh, name? If I look, oh, hover over here, this is actually the constructor for the name. And we can also go up here, hover over this, and see that's the, the Java doc that I gave for the name class. So these are all very useful things for uh, a, a group project where not everybody knows exactly what's going on. This is how people figure out, well, what the heck is a name? Oh, it's a first name, last name. Got it. So that's all you need to do for this part of the project. We're going to work, I'm going give to give you another tutorial later on how to do um, some more fancy stuff with this, but that, that's a basics.